set for the night, kid. Five o'clock. I'm afraid, Pete. What? You favor down guards you got around here? But I'm due for parole next year. Stop believing in Santa Claus. Look, kid. I got just as much to worry about as you. I want to live and it's going to be on the outside. What are they talking about? Keep me tonight at five o'clock in the yard. Nice and quiet around here, ain't it, babe? Yeah. Kind of reminds me of when I was a kid at home. Mm-hmm. Kind of makes me feel homesick, too. You know, someday one of my hunches is going to click, and I'm going back to the ranch and really retire. you retire, all right. But when you do, you'll be so full of lead, they'll have to get a truck to haul you. Hey, Tex, are you sure this is the spot Brower picked? <laughs> well, I don't know. I spent enough time around here. Well, I hope nobody sees you today. Hey, if anybody comes by, we better make this look like a necking party. Any necking you do will be on the end of a rope. <laughs> Oi, kid. They saw us. Hey, get that motor started. Give all you got.
breakfast is getting cold, dear. I'm sorry, Mary. What would happen to me if I didn't eat my breakfast, Mom? Well, you wouldn't grow up to be a big, strong man like your daddy. But I'd get whopped if I didn't eat my carrots and my spinach. No, son. You wouldn't get walloped. Hot, biggie dog. What's the occasion of the uniform today? Mom and I are going to the picnic. That's right. This is your big day. And how? I see Brower made good his escape. I must have driven a hundred miles last night, running down tales of people seeing him here, there, and everywhere. What did he do, Dad? Escape from prison. Better not come around here. You, me, and Uncle Tom will fix him, won't we? You bet we will. Tom not up yet? I haven't heard him moving about. Shall I get him up, Dad? Yes, I think you'd better. Oh, boy! Hey, hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> you give up? You give up? Yeah, yeah, I, I give up. I give Who's up. Who's the champion pillow fighter? You are. Are you sure of that? Yeah. <laughs> Did you win the pistol match last night, Tom? There it is. In the world of the up to now. Looks like target practice, sis. <laughs> Maybe I'd better go out and help him.
I should have known something was wrong when I kept hitting those cans. <laughs> Never mind, champ. You're young yet. You've got lots of time to learn how to shoot. Will you teach me? Everything I know. Gosh, that's swell. When do I start? Now? What do I do first? Well, there's quite a lot to it. I'll practice every day. Well, let's see how fast you can pull that trigger six times. I'll time you. You ready? Ready. Go. How'd I do? Ten seconds. You'll have to practice until you can do it in five. Gosh, I figure that fast. You'll have to crease your fingers so it'll move faster. Oh, what's that? Oh, some of the kids are having a picnic today. Oh, a fine pal. Gonna run off and leave me after getting me up this early. Well, I guess I'll have to. We've got to keep an eye on him. Oh, I see. <laughs> Hi, fellas. Hi, Hi. I hate to go time without giving you your breakfast. Oh, that's all right, Mom. He always eats another breakfast at Polly Moore's. <laughs> well, anyway, everything's all ready, so you just eat the coffee. Well, I think I'll take Sandy's tip and stop at Polly's. See, what did I tell you, Mom? <laughs> Like some love and kisses. Hey, Sarge? Say, that's a thought. Thanks. Oh, Tom. Say, how about some donuts for me? Oh, yes, sir. This program has been coming to you through the courtesy of the Sterling Flower Company. In just a moment, Betty Brown is going to tell you how to make the most delicious golden waffles you have ever tasted. There's my order. Waffles. And you better make it two or three of them. Will that be enough? Lady, I told you I was a hungry man. Calling car 11. Car 1-1. One, one. Go to Thurston Hill, a traffic accident. Connor, since you have your breakfast here every morning, how about getting here a little earlier on Saturday to cover the bank while the payroll is being transferred? Why, you can depend on the crew that's handling the armored car, Mr. Davidson. They know their onions. Undoubtedly. But the Hamilton Bank isn't dealing in vegetables. Calling car 23. Car 23. <laughs> didn't shoot.
car. Yes, and if you hadn't been driving like madmen, this never would have happened. Go on, go home. Sandy. Doctor, is he? He's as well as can be expected, Mrs. McNair. There's been a severe concussion, which has affected the optic nerve, and we're trying to relieve the pressure. You mean his eyesight is in danger? We shall know definitely for a day or two. Such a yeah, on the pistol range. Did you ever see or hear me shooting anything but a target? If anyone else had the opportunity I had today, Rower would be in the hospital instead of Sandy. Here's Marvel, Tom. He'll stop him. Tom. Uncle Tom. It may be that Tom has heard in a matter of judgment. Judgment had nothing to do with it. Thomas failed to shoot when he had the opportunity and the bandits escaped. As I told you, Mr. Davidson, we're making a thorough investigation of the robbery. Come in. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Connor. You know Mr. Davidson? Yes, sir. Mr. Davidson has preferred charges against you of gross negligence in the performance of duty. That's putting it mildly. It was cowardly. And there should be no place in the police department for men of that type. I'm sorry, sir, but... Mr. Davison is right, Inspector. And I wish to tender my resignation to take effect immediately. You admit the charges? You admit that you hadn't the nerve to shoot? That's right, sir. Uh, give me a rye. Uh, pretty busy joint, isn't it? So what? Yeah, 
Trying to dope him? Yeah. Saddle boy in the fifth looks pretty good to me. That nag ain't got a chance. Well, Geronda's five dollar wire from the track fix him. <laughs> well, he had three winners in yesterday's races. <laughs> yeah, and he'll have three more for today and tomorrow's wire. Don't be a sap and fall for that gag. But if you really want a nag that can pick him up and lay him down, they can never caught him the second. He's a cent. <laughs> you pay about ten to one. Never caught. <laughs> that goat can't get out of his own way. Who touted him to you? Nobody touted him to me. I figured it out myself. It was a hunt. And I always play my hunches. <laughs> pay no attention to him. The bookies have been taking him to the cleaners every day for a month. Now, if you want a sure thing, I've got it. Copper. Ah, it's no good for my dough. Where's he running? He ain't running. He's walking. And he's coming this way. You're wanted down at headquarters. Well, so you can't get along without me, huh? Be all the same to me if I never saw that mug of yours again. But they want to ask you some questions. He knows all the answers. Why bother me? Don't you be sensible and snap out of it. I did. About a month ago. Hey, you. Where are you going? Who, me? I, uh... But, Kirk, I want you. Come on, let's get out of here! You say your name was dynamite? Well, it's as good as any. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> well, what do you think of my hunches now? Hunches? Yeah. What was the name of that horse I told you to bet on? Never caught. Right. Say, listen, what race is he in? Second. Second. We still got time to make it. What do you say? Let's go. Hi. Hunter to win, never caught, second Arlington. Just in time, they're at the post now. This little hunch is going to cost you, sweetheart. You better get the dough ready. We're off at Arlington. Uh-oh. Hold your hats, boys. Here we go. At the quarter. Ping pong ahead. Never caught second. Iron hoofs third. Blue Bell and Lucky Boy trailing. Ah, come on, never caught. Dust their faces. Dust their faces. At the half. Ping pong. Never caught. Iron hoofs. Lucky Boy coming fast on the outside. Looks like your hunch is right today. Oh, you said it, kid. In the stretch. This is close. Never caught by a nose. Oh, I can I pick him, boy? Ping pong second, lucky boy. The winner. Bluebell from out of the clouds. Lucky boy second, ping pong third. Well, I got about as much dough left as a frog has hair. Yeah, me too. Better luck in the next one, McGirt. Yeah. Say, are you Texas McGirt, the big shot? Why, yeah. Come here. What's the matter? The trouble with you guys is you don't think. The only thing you use your head for is a parking place to put your ears. Why don't you use your noodle like me? How? By playing hunches that never win? There you go, rubbing it in. But remember, I got a reputation. My work's known from coast to coast. Well, you saw what happened a while ago, didn't you? Well, you mean the copper? And I wouldn't be telling you this either. She did me a favor. Say, listen, why can't you and me get together? Now you're using your noodle. A lone wolf hasn't got a chance. It was all right in the old days, but times have changed. Organization is a thing today. You know, there's a technique to my business. It takes years and years of study. Science advances, well, you have to keep up with it. Yeah, yeah that's pretty tough. Huh. But listen, tough ain't the name. I spend weeks taking out a place. See? Everything goes according to schedule. And the minute my back is turned, somebody steps on a button that I don't even know is that. When I hit the street, sirens are blowing, coppers are coming. I tell you, there just ain't no justice anymore. Well, that's why I think you'd like my racket. Maybe. Keep talking. There's a couple of spots in town that are just right for picking. With me and you working together, you can make enough dough to play all the hunches you want. Well, my luck sure ain't been so good lately. Maybe it's due for a change. Let's have it. Why, is it bought? Still playing hunches? Yeah. And still feeding the kitty, I suppose. Dynamite, Babe Foster. How are you? What was that name? Hogan. Dynamite Hogan. Oh. No text long? Oh, we've been around. 
Then I don't have to warn you not to follow any of his hunches. <laughs> no. I've just convinced him he should follow my hunches for a change. Got anything good on the next race? Mm, it's something easier to beat than horses. Well, I'll be seeing you. I wouldn't get mixed up in anything Pete might not like. Say, who is that? Better lay off. That is a girlfriend of Pete Brower. Looks like somebody's trying to chisel in. Don't be crazy, they are. Hey, cut that radio off. Get a load of this. Better, honey. Have any of you seen any out of town boys around? Well, I ain't, boss. I've been over spotting at the central warehouse for a week. All right, stop crying. Wait a minute, Pete. Have any of you seen Tex lately? How about you, Molly? No, I ain't seen him for four or five days. Chisler. Today is Friday. That would make it Monday or Tuesday. And it was Tuesday that I saw him in the pool room. What is this, a game? Tex introduced me to a pal of Well, who is he? No, I never saw him before. What was his name? Oh, we give up. Dynamite. Dynamite Hogan. Does that mean anything to you? I never heard of him. Anybody here ever hear of Hogan? No. It's something about betting on a hunch. It doesn't mean a thing. Tex always bets on hunches. Yeah, but it wasn't Tex. It was Hogan. He said he had a surer racket than the horses. Yeah? Slim, you and Dave pick up Tex and Hogan. Boss, it'll be a pleasure. By the way, I want them back here on their feet. Who is it? Don't take your glasses off, Sandy. It's Aunt Polly. Oh, gee, I can see without them. I tried it. Is Uncle Tom with you? No, he isn't, Sandy. What are you doing that for? Practicing. Practicing? Sure. So as I can shoot like Uncle Tom. You know, I bet you he'd come back if he knew my eyes were hurt. Say, you ain't keeping something from me, are you? What makes you say that, Sandy? Well, I heard Mom and Dad whispering. Something about Uncle Tom, but I couldn't understand him. He ain't hurt, is he? Is he? Yes, Sandy, he is. Gosh, bad? Very bad. We're sure me? Oh, Sandy. It's a different kind of hurt. It's inside. Can't the doctors fix it? No. Who can? Only one person. Tom. Are you sure of that? Why, of course. If he really wants to. If he tries hard enough. Well, then I gotta get busy, because he's gonna do it. Here. Thanks. Hello, Polly. Oh, hello, Bill. Still that, son? You betcha. Uncle Tom's coming home soon. Why didn't you tell me he was hurt, Dad? You were too sick. Gee whiz. What do you think I am? I can take it. Oh, Buddy came over to see you, Sandy. Hiya, bud. All right. You think you two can keep out of trouble while we go over to the house? You betcha. All right. Have you heard from Tom? No, I thought you might have. I'm not a word. I can't understand it. You might as well quit that. Your uncle ain't never coming home. Bet he is. No, he ain't. Sure he is, soon as he's better. Huh, he ain't hurt. He is too, worser than me. Aw, oh, they're fooling you. Bet you they ain't. Did they tell you he was fired from the cops? He never was. He was too, because he yeller. What did you say? He's yeller. You take that back. I will not. 
I'll make you take it back. How are you gonna? You can't even see me. I dare you to fight. I wouldn't fight a blind guy. I ain't blind. Go on and hit me. Sure you are. If you weren't, you'd look where I am. I'm behind you. out of the town, isn't he? Yeah, I know that. That's just what I'm worried about. You both speak like I do. You let me worry about him. Did you hear something? They've shut their motor off. Go ahead, slow. There it goes again. Hey, maybe it's a patrol boat. We better make a run for it. I'll tie her off and meet you up the street. Oh, hello, Charlie. Is that your boat, Connors? Yeah. Anything wrong with it? Why didn't you stop when we shot at you out there? Oh, was that you? I thought it was some duck hunters shooting out of season. Hey, listen, you want to be careful. Some of those shots came pretty close. If you want some help, I'd be glad to take you on a sightseeing tour. It's pretty difficult finding your way around a strange boat. Uh, maybe I'd better help you. Do stay where you are. Did you find anything? No, sir. Let me in on the secret, will you? After all, you know it's my boat. A Brindley's cottage was robbed tonight. And the crooks got away in a boat described like yours. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Very. You may be smarter than I think you are, Connors. But if you're mixed up in this, look out. Let's go. How'd you make out with the cops? Ah, they were a cinch. There they go. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you and me make a great team, don't we? Sure. But we got to get rid of that stuff we got tonight. And that's where you come in. You mean Brown? Sure. <laughs> now, we better just forget about that, because that means cutting him in for a big slice. Listen. 
All you've got to do is arrange for me to meet Brower, and I'll handle the deal with him. Hey, Tex. Hey, what do you want? Hey, we ain't looking for no argument, Tex. Well, what's the idea of coming up tapping a guy on the shoulder? He might have shot you full of holes. Friends of yours? Yeah. This is Slim Ryan, Dave Green. This is Dynamite Hogan. So you're Hogan. That's right. You two boys have been causing the chief a lot of trouble. Who's he mean, Brower? Yeah. Why, we were just talking about looking him up, weren't we, Tex? Why, good. Uh, Let's go someplace and talk it over. That's great. Come on, Tex. Yeah. down. No, thanks. I'll stand. I like the feel of something against my back. Nervous? No. Careful. Have a cigarette. You know, I don't remember seeing you long enough to know my way around. I see by the papers that you've got a lot of rocks and hot ice on your hand. What are you going to do with them? Well, the rocks won't turn to sand and the ice isn't the kind that melts, so if we can't make a deal, we'll just keep them. What kind of a deal? Brower anything in mind? Maybe. Where is he? Let's get together. Oh, anything I do will be all right with Brower. Owner Tex. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Anything Slim does is okay with Pete. You can depend on What were you thinking of seeing him about? Well, I'm convinced that a lone wolf hasn't got a chance. That organization's the thing. Yeah? It was all right in the old days, but times have changed. Science advances. You've got to keep up with it. So what? Well, I've got some frozen assets, and you've got the organization that can throw them out. Meaning you want to throw in with us? Yeah, if you can show me an even break. Hey, he's a swell guy, Slim. Uses his noodle, too. You know, Brower likes the way you work. That's the reason I'm going to let you in on something. Want to cut in on it? Well, I don't know. What do you think, Tex? You can't go wrong. All right, we're in. Get Jimmy on the phone. He's the guy that handles all our stuff. He's the best bet in town. Now, you turn your junk over to me, and you'll have the dough in no time at all. <laughs> not so fast. I'm not turning anything over to anybody. What do you mean? You tell this Jimmy, whoever he is, that Tex and I will be by to see him. We'll handle our own deal. Still nervous? No, still careful. All right. We retraced the course we chased colors over the other night. We found that can tied to a float. The rope had been cut from a coil in his speedboat. Broadcast a call to pick up Tom Connors. Slim call you? Your name Hogan? That's right. Have you got the stuff? Yeah. Hey, where do you think you are? Home? We'll unlock that door. You cover the back. I'll go to the front. The coppers. Beat it. I'll have the shoulder fixed up and see you later, Tex. Right. Turn out the lights. What is it? Nothing. Uh, let's go inside. What's the trouble, Tom? Holly, 
I've got to be careful. Someone may have followed me. Bill, tell me the police had orders to pick you up on site. That's right. You see, I... Oh, Tom. I wish I were a man so I could shake you like you really deserve. What is it? It's uh, nothing. Rheumatism, I guess. Tom, you've been hurt. Why didn't you tell me? What's well, only a scratch. How's Sandy? Oh, he's up and around. I'm glad to hear that. He's still greasing his finger. That was a silly thing to tell a child to do. Oh, darling, it's so good to see you again. Oh. Maybe they'll go away if I don't answer. Perhaps you better see who it is. All right. I'll get rid of them somehow. Good evening, Polly. Oh, good evening. Sorry to bother you. Oh, uh, not at all. I mean, uh, that is, <laughs> the shop's closed right now. Oh, I just came around for a little talk. Uh, well, uh, I I'd invite you in, but I have company. Oh, uh, Tom Connor? No. Well, I haven't seen it's him. It's all right, Polly. I asked Inspector Blair to meet me here. Hasn't he told you what he's been doing? No, he hasn't. Not a word. I'm sorry, darling. I should have explained everything to you, but I haven't had an opportunity. I've been worried ever since the boys reported wounding you. It wasn't anything at all. Uh, darling, I'd like to have a few words with Inspector Blair. Will you get us some coffee? Yes, of course. Have you found Bra? No, but I met his right-hand man, Slim Ryan. I've set myself in with him. Where's the hideout? 610 Nippon Street. Great. We'll surround that place and blast him out of it. Well, you may get his gang, but you'll never get Brower. As soon as a squad car hits Chinatown, he'll know it. And he's the one I'm after. You got any ideas? Yes. They're going to pull a job tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. I'm to meet them at Central Warehouse. All right. We'll wait till tomorrow night. Suppose you take a couple of days vacation. You've finished your job. No, no, I haven't. They think I've lost $50,000 worth of jewelry. If I don't show up there tonight, they'll know something's wrong. Oh, it's too dangerous. You're between two fires. Brower and the police. Listen, Inspector. I had a chance to get Brower once, and I failed. I'll not do it again. I know just how you feel. Suppose we say your vacation begins after tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I got it. Meet the boys at Nick's garage and drive around to the west entrance at 10. Right. Pete wants to talk to you. Hello? Yeah. I'll ride with the truck as far as Uniontown. Pick me up there. Understand? Sure, you can depend on me, big boy. All right. I'll be waiting for you. Bye. Trying to pull another fast one on me, huh? Mean and what? Those two coppers over at Jimmy's joint were planted. Listen, Slim wouldn't do a thing like that. He was as much surprised as you were. Well, you're about to check out on me now, weren't you? Well, listen, Slim had Babe and I driving all over town looking for you, didn't he, Babe? Yeah, we parked in front of your joint so long we began to look like part of the scenery. When I met you yesterday, I wasn't sure of you. So I gave you a phony date. But we're knocking over the warehouse tonight at 10. Tonight? 10? Yes. Anything wrong with that? No. No, that's great. I thought I saw you come in here. What are you doing here? Is that all you have to say? Who is she? Uh, Why don't you tell him? Well, I... I... <laughs> Tongue tied, huh? Well, I ain't. Six months ago in Chicago, he told me he's going to step out and get a paper. He's been stepping ever since. Hey, count me out, sister. I only met him twice. So you didn't think I'd follow you, huh? Well, here I am. You remember the night you said my hands are fit for diamonds and you'd be sure I'd get them? <laughs> well, I'm still waiting. But I've been reading the newspapers. I know how you work. That's right. Go ahead. Spill everything you know. You bet I will. 
And I'd like to see anyone try and stop me, you two-timing Romeo. Hey, listen, lady. You stay out of this. I'll manage my own affairs. Hey, we gotta get going. Yeah, that's right. Listen, honey. Don't honey me. Oh, be reasonable. I'll change the record. All right. I said I'd get you diamonds, didn't I? Yeah. Don't see me wearing any, do you? Well, how do you think you'd look in a Russian sable? About the same as you'd look in a wooden overcoat. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't any laughing matter. Come on now, be serious. Are you? You think I'm trying to be funny? Oh. You mean you're, uh, you're not kidding about those Russian sables? Certainly not. Now, you be a good little girl and run along home, and I'll see that you get the finest fur coat a lady ever had. Here. I'll, uh, I'll see you boys outside. <laughs> I know just how he feels. I had a girl once. Oh, come on. Darling, you certainly turned out to be my guardian angel. Are you just finding that out now? Oh, John, why don't you come along with me? There's no reason for you to stay here. Well, yes, there is. I've got to call. Uh, you know I love you. Oh, John. Hey, love a funny racket. Yeah. Listen, get to a phone, tell Inspector Blair the party's tonight at 10 o'clock. He'll understand. Uh, well, uh, good night, dear. Bye. How am I doing? Uh, all right. Well, looks like the war is over. Police Department, Inspector Blair's office. May I talk with Inspector Blair, please? Oh, well, uh, tell him that the party is tonight instead of tomorrow night. And he must be there by 10. He'll understand. All right. I'll tell him. Girl, making a date with the old man. Looks as if he's putting one over on us. You never can tell about these quiet ones. No. <laughs> Police Department, Inspector Blair's office. Just be quiet, Pop, and you won't get hurt. Joe, stay here with him. Come on, Slim. Go here. Come on, get busy. You got the side entrance covered? Yeah. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, sir. Oh, I almost forgot, sir. A lady phoned and said the party was for 10 tonight instead of 11 o'clock tomorrow night, and that you would understand. Connors. Notify all cars in District 6, 8, and 11. Close in on the central warehouse at once. Send me a squad car. Calling cars in District 6. Eight and eleven go to Central Warehouse. A robbery. That's us. Let's go. Calling cars in District Six. Eight and eleven go to Central Warehouse. A robbery. Here we go.
got to get out of here right away. What's the matter? Hogan's girl just called the police. Slim, get Hogan. Get back to your apartment. I'll meet you later. Well, looks like a great haul, Pete. So you're a friend of Hogan's? Yeah, you'll like him. He's a right guy. Yeah, right in with the police. What do you mean? You know what I mean. He's a copper, ain't he? Oh, now wait a minute, Pete. You got him all wrong. Yeah, listen, Pete, he's a small guy. He's a regular. He's all right. Sure he is. Yeah, sure he is. Yeah, yeah. Still a good guy with me. Dynamite. Morning to you, Polly. Oh, same to you, Tom. What have you got for a hungry man? Oh, ham and eggs. No. Uh, sausage country style. Mm. Maybe you'd like some love and kisses, Aunt Polly. Say, that's an idea. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 